Hello friends and welcome to Pro Automation. This is Rahul and today we are going to check some very cool XPath functions. So it's it's um, if you want to be uh, expert in Selenium or programming, then you your object identification skills must be top notch. So I'll show you some tricks which I use, and for that I have. Uh, I have this web table here and uh, I'll give you a problem statement and we'll try to solve it using a very simple elegant XPath. So the statement goes like this, uh, in a web table which is a dynamically generated uh, web table means data uh, uh, getting generated on some click or event, um, you need to find XPath for a checkbox corresponding or with respect to some data in other column. So for example, if I give you 3.417, so you need to find the XPath for the checkbox number two. Or if I say 1.234, then three, or 1877, then again the same one. So we'll see a couple of very cool XPath tricks. And for that, let me just go to inspect mode okay so as you can see inside this div it's a table um, let me just hover over any of the element let's see this 3.417 okay so this 3.417 you can see here it's a TD so it's a simple web table with TR and TD structure and each TR TD means it's a cell. So a cell contains text whose text is 3.417 and you need to find the checkbox which is in some other TD and it might be uh, having some uh, accessor but for now we'll just take a very common one which is type equals to checkbox. Okay. Now there can be multiple variations, there can be multiple checkboxes, but to keep it simple, I'm just considering this very simple web table where we just have one checkbox and I'm just creating a hypothetical problem statement wherein you have to check a checkbox if you pass the shares value. Okay. Or maybe uh, it can also be like article name. If I pass some specific article name, then you need to check the specific select date. Okay, so I'll show you a very generic XPath and you can use it as uh, the situation, as per the situation. So I can just go to console and I'll clear the console like this. Okay, and I'll try to find this cell as it is 3RTD. <clears throat> so I can just say um, something like this $x and uh, double. Um, and I'll just say any TD whose at the rate, sorry, my bad, whose text equals to 3.417. Okay, now as you can see, I'm using text as a function and not as an attribute. So if you want to access anything like class or for attribute, then you will have to mention at the rate, but text is a function, okay, of, of a cell. So you can see, if I just press enter, it will give me a TD so, and it, it is pointing to this 3.417. Similarly, if I want to find any other TD whose text is like this, uh, I can just go and replace this 3.4 with 7 with this, enter and you can see this TD is now pointing to the specific TD. Okay, now I have to find the X path for this radio button. Now we, we can uh, use a uh, preceding sibling and those X paths as well, but uh, this is quite possible that it is not on the same, uh, it's, it, might, it might, might not be a sibling as well also, right? So the best approach that I can think of uh, is 
you can traverse outward to find this parent T, TR. Okay. So you, if you find a TR, then you can traverse back in uh, inwards and then you can find this specific input. Okay. So let me do that. And for doing that, there is a function called ancestor. And this is a syntax for it. And I'm just saying TR1. Now, why am I specifying TR1? It means immediate parent to this element. To this element, immediate parent ancestor, it means it's going outwards. Okay. Okay. So if I just say TR, now if I just, if I want to highlight this, it will say, okay, this is the complete TR. You can see. It is the complete TR. Now I need to traverse inward. Okay. So I'm not sure where it is, right? Where the input is. It, it shows uh, it's inside some TD having divs and then input. So what I'll do, I'll just uh, use this relative X path, which means anywhere inside this TR, any input and at the rate at the rate means I'm trying to use any of the attributes so I'll use this type attribute so the attribute is type is equal to checkbox so you can see clearly I can find this specific checkbox now you can use this xpath in many ways um, you can it's just an xpath you can create a function and for example, if I want to check 913, any value uh, checkbox corresponding to 913. So I just have to change this text here as 913. And again, so you can see I'm pointing to this one. Right. So yeah, uh, I think that's it. You can just play around with experts, use these functions like how, uh, but the main thing is you need to visualize the this, this structure, this HTML. So TDs are on the same line, TD comes inside TR, TR inside a T body, something like that. And you can use this double forward slash very wisely. This means it's anywhere in the page a TD whose text is equal to 3.417 and uh, one more thing to note here I'm not using contains I'm just doing an exact comparison okay so for example if if I use this and if I just remove this E from here you'll not be able to find anything because it's doing an exact comparison it's doing an exact check okay so you can see now again it's coming Okay, and okay, so I found that TD, which was this TD, or you can find with another text or something like that. So I, I was able to find this. Then I moved outward using ancestor function. That's again an XPath function, and there's a syntax for it ancestor TR1. And TR1 means immediately parent of this td and the first one okay okay so immediately after this the first one and then i started moving inwards so just after this tr1 i start uh, i use double forward slash means inside this tr any input whose type is checkbox okay so you can use all these concepts uh, you can just play around the xpaths in any you can just open a browser in a chrome and you can play around these things. So I hope you like this uh, small um, problem statement and an elegant solution using XPath. And you can create a functions around it in Selenium. And have fun with it. Okay, that's it. Have a good day. Thank you.